Now, listen, I cannot debate the polling. I can say I don't like polling, but very often that's self-serving when the polling's not saying what you want. But let's assume that it's all knotted up, certainly within a margin of error. It does remind me of 2004. You're not old enough to remember that election, Rana, but I it was, was like I'm, this I'm one definitely uh, old with enough. Bush and Kerry. <laughs> I, always take the compliment. However, however, why... It, it, is this a case where you guys are so tight because you're telling the better story, not necessarily because it's true? Because the part that you leave out in the analysis, which I agree with what you said, was better before than it is now in a lot of pocketbook economic indexes. No question about it. But why? The pandemic. And how does Trump escape scrutiny for screwing up the beginning of the pandemic, creating economic freefall? that we are still in recovery from and recovering better than most other major economies. Why isn't that the story for the American people? Well, Chris, let's look at states that were run by Republican governors versus Democrat governors. And states like Michigan were shut down under Gretchen Whitmer. I did an op-ed about this today, mm -hmm. about my kids that didn't go to school, that lost critical learning. Mm -hmm. Michigan right now is 41st in the country in education. 39% of third graders can read in Michigan. What does that mean? It means 60% can't read in our state. They, they failed our kids. They failed them catastrophically. Our state is on the decline. People are struggling under the, the burden of, of so much uh, cost of living problems that we're having in our state. And I feel it. Listen, mm -hmm. talk to my kids about how hard it is to pay rent. And well, we're helping our kids, but talk to my kids' friends right now about how hard it is to pay rent at college. How hard is it to pay car insurance? How hard is it to get a job? How hard is it to make it? Everybody is struggling in our state. And that's not because of Donald Trump. That's because of Gretchen Whitmer and Biden and Harris. And on top of that, they've come into our state and said, we're going to require EV cars. And we're going to break the back of the auto industry and union workers in Michigan. And we are going to force this change on your state, which is you know, the lifeblood of so many people across our state. And that is really what's moving the needle in Michigan against Alyssa Slotkin and Kamala Harris are these EV mandates that, EV mandates that they championed. I think the man, I think any kind of mandate, look, we need to do a review of the pandemic and figure out what worked and what didn't. And we both know why it's not happening. It's not happening because both parties are going to have stink on them. Trump from early on, he could barely even talk about Operation Warp Speed because so many of his people are anti-vaxxers. And the Democrats were in charge for so much of it and giving out so much of that money and in charge of all the lockdowns. So they don't want to do it. And but they kept at some kids point, we got to have that Chris. discussion. They, they kept our kids out of I, the classroom. Listen, I get it. And there's mental health it. issues. I they have it. deficits in learning. It's going to affect their I livelihoods know. going forward. And they've never taken accountability. And I think this is where Harris really struggles, too. She won't even acknowledge it. She won't say, you know what? We didn't do right by you. And you have been hurt. And they well, push out Bidenomics no and they try and make it sound like that. it was a good thing. No, we know that the cost of living is If high. accountability mattered to you, Rana, you would not support Donald Trump <laughs> because he has never taken responsibility for anything. That's politics. Well, policy he just does takes it to a different to degree. Policy does matter. And when you are not going to, you're, when you're going to pull back regulations, when you're going to cut taxes, when you're going to do things to get this economy humming mm -hmm. again, which he did, when you're going to unleash energy independence, those are the things that Republicans are looking for in a second uh, uh, Trump presidency that's going to allow our economy to be unleashed and have more economic gains. Let me ask you about tomorrow night quickly. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the task is for J.D. Vance with a Detroit audience? Because you know, I don't know why people keep saying, you know, oh, how will it go between me and him? We both know what town halls are. I don't know why it's lost on so many others in the media. Oh, Chris, I think everybody knows they're, questions. when they're up against you, you know, you got to have it. You, you got to be on your toes. I mean, J.D.'s got to be ready. But listen, Michigan is a key state and people in Michigan want to hear about their jobs. They want to hear that that Republicans care about that. I think where Kamala is really losing voters is with this working class group of voters. And we saw this huge shift in 2016 mm. where Reagan Democrats in Macomb mm. County became Trump Republicans yeah. um, in, in 2016. And they're shifting even more. And she's losing that working class. And the Republican Party mm. is actually becoming the party of the working class. And the Democrat Party is losing that. And Michigan is ground mm. zero for that.
Yeah, listen, it's one of the most interesting things in the shift uh, from my father's Democratic Party to my brother's Democratic Party in, in terms of me watching it. Um, and also, I want to tell people, Ronna, before I let you uh, go, uh, that you have an op-ed in The Hill that is yes. a really interesting analysis of young voters. There's a presumption uh, that Harris uh, could have a 3x advantage on them, uh, but you make a good case for how inroads are being made and how that could unfold in this election. People should check it out in The Hill. Ronna McDaniel has the op-ed. Thank you for coming on to make the case always welcome thanks for having me hey thanks for watching go to joinnn.com to find news nation on your screen and don't forget click the red subscribe button below to get more of news nation's fact-driven unbiased coverage